Can't wait for all the big Marvel movies coming out this summer? Well, here's something to tide you over. Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes is having its first three episode arc. And the big bad is, wait for it, Kang! <laughs> Catch the rerun of the first episode on Saturday and the second episode debuts on Sunday, all on Disney XD. So set your alarm clocks or to watch it Kang style, your DVRs. This is the watcher, yeah, I bet there's quite a few. And if you were watching the watcher, then you know it's watching you. So come on and show everyone here who is waiting for the news. Speaking of villains, they had a banner year in 2010. Every corner of the Marvel Universe was rocked to its core by villains old and new. But who did it best? Here's Marvel's official top 10 list of villains of 2010 to settle the score. Number 10 is Loki, who played a pivotal role in the destruction of Asgard, and therefore to some degree the destruction of Norman Osborn. But then, like most spoiled children, Loki decided he didn't want what he thought he wanted after all. So Loki's change of heart lands him at the bottom of this list. Perhaps he'll fare better this year now that he's been reincarnated yet again, this time literally as a spoiled child. Number 9 was Selene, who brought numerous X-Men back from the dead in an attempt to destroy the living X-Men. Yes, the resulting therapy bills alone were a huge setback for our merry mutants. And turning fan favorite Blink into a villain was quite the shocker. In the end, Selene came this close to becoming a god, only to be destroyed by Warpath and his ghost dance ritual. Best ancient Indian burial ground story ever. Number 8 is Baron Zemo, who went all WikiLeaks on Bucky. And by revealing Bucky's past as the Winter Soldier, Baron Zemo delivered his most devastating blow to the Captain America legacy yet. See kids, sometimes nonviolence is the answer. But it only gets you to number 8 on a top 10 list. Number 7 is The Hood. Parker Robbins hasn't been a villain for very long, but he went from a hood to the hood in a short period of time thanks to his ability to accessorize. First was a demonic pair of boots and a cape, then the Norn Stones, and now he's after the Infinity Gems. He's got red and yellow, and if he gets the other four, I shudder to think where he'll be on this list next year. Number six is the Chaos King, who is enslaving gods in his bid to destroy reality. That's right, not just the universe, but reality. Go big or go home. And the God Squad is intending to send the Chaos King home. While this fight isn't finished yet, it's clear that the Chaos King, aka Mikabashi, aka the Japanese God of Evil, is now one of the Marvel Universe's big bads. Number five is the Intelligentsia, who in true evil fashion created Hulk variant figures. But that turned out to be a good thing, as in the end it took their combined gamma powers, as well as some hulked out Marvel heroes, to bring them down. But not without a price. Doc Samson sacrificed himself to save the hulked out heroes. For those of you who put MODOK at 2% in our recent graphic debate for most dangerous villain, you should remember that. Number four is the Craven family, who had the most horrifying family outing of the year. And by the time they were done, the heads of Maddie Franklin, Madam Webb, and Kane were all mounted on their wall. And while the Cravens ended the year a few members short, it was indeed survival of the fittest, as no one could deny that Anna Craven is quickly becoming one of Spider-Man's most vicious and disturbing villains. Who would have thought the guy in leopard pants would end up so high on this list? Number three is Dr. Doom, the Frank Sinatra of crime. This guy plays it old school and always wins. He even has your respect as he won that graphic debate for most dangerous villain. This year, he temporarily took over the country of Wakanda, forcing T'Challa to destroy all of the world's vibranium. But then, the Scarlet Witch, who the entire world is looking for, falls into his lap with, get this, amnesia. And now they're engaged. That guy, he couldn't be good if he tried. Number two is Bastion, a blast from the X-Men's 1990s past. He was the perfect villain, an android, for which X-Force could use their new license to kill. But Bastion turned out to be no carving board as he set out to destroy the mutant race once and for all, and almost succeeded. In fact, it took none other than the mutant messiah herself, Hope Summers, to stop him. But there were still mass casualties, from Helion's hands to Cable to Nightcrawler. 
few villains this year cut so deep. And the number one villain is Norman Osborn, who turned himself into a hero for way longer than anyone thought he could. And he would have gotten away with it too if not for his own greed. He just had to destroy Asgard. However, with an image makeover that makes him one of the most charismatic villains in years, I can assure you we have not seen the last of Norman Osborn. If you don't believe me, check out his amazing limited series which is out right now and setting the groundwork for his return as we speak. Come back, Normie! We actually miss you! And now it's time for Triceristack, my three picks of the comics hitting stands this coming Wednesday, January 19th. First up is Amazing Spider-Man number 652, written by Dan Slott with art by Stefano Caselli. You'd think Spidey would get a breather, but no! A brand new story arc starts here that pits him against the all-new Spider-Slayer. For Peter Parker, the hits just keep on coming, and you don't want to miss a beatdown. Then be sure to pick up Wolverine and Jubilee number one, written by Catherine Eminen with art by Phil Noto. Yes, Jubilee is still a vampire. Yes, she's going to stay a vampire. Find out how we're going to make that work. And finally, one comic you are definitely not going to want to miss is Invincible Iron Man number 500, written by Matt Fraction. It's a whopping 72 pages for just five bucks. Features numerous guest artists, doesn't require you to have any previous knowledge of Tony Stark, and you get to meet his son from the future. Who, by the way, has already read this comic and says it's excellent. And last but not least, it's time for Graphic Debate. This week's question comes from the Winter Soldier on Marvel.com who asks, which character should be brought back from the dead? Ares, Black Bolt, Cable, Jean Grey, or the Sentry? Since I like the fact that Jean Grey has stayed dead for seven years and I don't want to end the streak, I'm going to have to go with the Sentry as I enjoy his odd couple relationship with Norman Osborn. Share your thoughts in the comments below or in the Marvel.com message boards, which is also where you have to cast your official vote. And that's this week's The Watcher. To see all the stuff we talked about today, as well as more top 10 lists for 2010, check out the links in the YouTube video description or the Marvel.com news story for this episode. I'm Grace Randolph for Marvel's Your Universe. Marvel, your universe.